Hi, I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Advanced Technology Center of Worldwide Technologies, one of the world's leading systems integrators. So I'm going to go in, have a look around, and see a lot of the cool things that they're doing in there. So let's go in and have a look. I'm in the Advanced Technology Center now of Worldwide Technologies, also known as WWT. I'm here with VP of Marketing, Chad Bockhart. That's great. And, uh, yeah, WWT is an interesting company, right? You're uh, almost fifteen billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're you don't have the, certainly the name brand of other fifteen billion dollar companies. Mm -hmm. I've always thought of you as the industry's best secret. So, mm -hmm. uh, just give us a bit of a, a download on who WWD is. What do you do? How do you operate? Yeah, yeah. I think you know we're one of the largest systems integrators in the tech space today. You know, covering you know the public sector, uh, covering you know a lot of large enterprise, you know, healthcare, manufacturing, financial services, uh, as well as a lot of the service providers. So. You know, and we provide really a full range of IT um, you know, solutions to our customers, whether it's you know, helping them you know, think through their strategy on how they want to digitize their business, or you know, actually helping them to develop applications, and then all the infrastructure that goes along with that, whether that's in the cloud or whether that's something that's on-premise, um, really just helping those organizations to uh, make the right decision for them for the projects that they're working on. Now, you, you take a, an end-to-end style, I, I think mm -hmm. working with customers, in fact, uh, although that's a term that I think is often overused. Yeah. Uh, so from a WWT perspective, how do you describe what end-to-end -end is? Yeah, you know, we actually use the term idea to outcome, and um, you know, that's always been good for us because, you know, if you think of those two sides of the bookend, you know, the idea is really, how do we help work with our customers so that they can think through what are they trying to accomplish, how do they want to accomplish that, and then how do we materialize that into something actionable that you can execute on? And then really looking at that outcome, what are they trying to achieve at the end of it, and how do we help them all the way through that from the time they start thinking about a project and what they want to do to how do they maintain and operate that long term and how do they deploy that on a global scale. So really we look at it from idea to outcome is, is really the, the bookends that we put on the projects that we work on with our customers. Yeah, one of the case studies that you told me about actually that I was pretty impressed with was mm -hmm. uh, because I think that was idea to outcome. Could you just give a, you know, a, a, a quick overview of what that mm -hmm. project was and how you worked with your customer there? Yeah, you know, we've worked with them for many years and um, you know, really, as they were, you know, many, many years ago looking to shorten lines and improve, you know, customer experience, you know, they uh, understood the importance of being able to do online ordering, to be able to use kiosks and self-service. And uh, so we worked with them, you know, on the front end, helping them to design and build those applications. Uh, we also uh, knew that, you know, in order for those things to work, you have to have good connect connectivity in those, um, in, in each one of those uh, cafes. You have to make sure that you have you know all of the right systems in place to be able to tie into the point of sale systems, et cetera. So you know we've really worked with them you know from top to bottom on helping to make sure that you know all of those things work together as well as you know helping to bring forth um, you know the application that you know many of us use and love today you know around you know, how they do the online ordering. So it is a pretty interesting and, and pretty cool story, and you know it doesn't end there. You know every you know they just like every other business is continuing to evolve, and so you know we're there to help them along the way and uh, continue to provide those services as they continue to grow and, and expand. And what's this building used for? This is known as your Advanced Technology Center, or ATC. How do you use this? Yeah, so uh, great question. So you know, the ATC is a virtual ecosystem, and that's kind of how, how we've always described it. And it's really a combination of um, you know, our customers, our employees, our partners, all coming together in a, into a, kind of a single environment to be able to build and create uh, and collaborate and solve problems together. And so what this uh, facility represents is really kind of the physical, um, you know, really the first data center that kind of goes into what we call the ATC. Uh, and that powers all the applications that we have on uh, WWT.com, uh, all of the labs, uh, and that's expanded now into this entire campus, which we have several data centers that are powering all those things. But you know, we also do proofs of concept for customers. Um, well, they can come in with a problem. We can work together to kind of you know see what's the right solution for them. You know, do all the appropriate testing, and really kind of help um, solve that problem for them. We do a lot of workshops in this facility. We bring a lot of customers through for EBCs just to imagine you know the art of the possible. What are the things that they can do? How are they thinking about their business? How are they thinking about their technology? And how can we help them achieve that? So this building is really a representation of you know, a lot of different spaces that we have that help kind of bring that together. But it also has that uh, added benefit of being able to actually see the physical infrastructure that powers the ATC. Well, there's a lot of cool things in this building. So let's go have a walk around and take a look at some let's of the things. Let's do it. Great. All right, thanks, Chad. Yeah. So we're in this room. Can you mm -hmm. describe what this is? Yeah. Well, really, kind of the highlights are over here. Um, you know, over the years, uh, the data center you see behind us, we've actually always referred to as the beachfront, and really, it's a representation of the the five data centers that we have here on campus. 
um, and just kind of in a visible way so you know customers can see easily you know here's some where some of the physical infrastructure lies and this data center goes way back obviously in terms of the number of rows and racks um, but you know it's really a representation of you know this is uh, these are the tools, this is the infrastructure that we use uh, to help really build those solutions out for our customers. Yeah, and in there we can find almost every vendor you work with. You, right? you name yeah. an enterprise technology provider, or uh, hardware, software, uh, and they're probably in there, one way or another, yes. All right, Chad, you mentioned the, in that other view that we had all the different rows of data centers. This is an actual view, though, of the data center. So can you help me understand what we're looking at here and how this works? Yeah, so um, you'll hear us talk about uh, our uh, ATC platform and uh, you know, really it, that sits at WWT.com. And you know, this is just one of the screens that we have in here, but you know, this shows a logical representation of the data center that's right behind us here. So you know, if you look at like, you know, this, this rack here, E14, you can actually go in, you can see the physical equi equipment that's in here, and then you can even learn a little bit more about what is that product, who makes it, what's the position in it, where does it sit in the data center, and also, where does that same product exist in the other data centers as well? So, you know, again, the, the magic's not necessarily in the physical infrastructure that we're looking at here, uh, but it's all the labs and everything that we have built around that. So, you know, when you're in our ATC platform and you go to the ATC tab on here, you can click quickly on the uh, ATC labs tab and you can see all of the labs that we have. And we have several hundred of these labs that are on demand that are for our customers to use uh, to help them get hands-on with these technologies and solve their problems and hopefully accelerate their business outcomes that they're trying to drive for. And so these are all available on www.com. Yes. If somebody yes. wanted to look at them themselves, they can, how does that process work? Yeah, so yeah. If, you're, if you're a registered user of WWT.com uh, and you are uh, using a corporate domain, meaning not a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, then you will have access to all of these labs in an on-demand capacity. And so you can go into any one of these, you can click on that access lab button and it'll launch right into a, a VM environment and you can use whatever that may be. And again, you know, our customers love this because it helps them you know, get hands-on with products that they don't yet own, uh, or maybe they've just purchased the products and they want to test out some things before they start implementing. So it's a great way to really you know, get comfortable with the technologies as, they, as they're coming out. And what I like about this, if we go back one tab, uh, is uh, some of this information you could get, you'd think I'd go to the vendor site, mm -hmm. but for instance, here's the SACI, SACI architecture, Cisco Viptela with Palo Alto Prisma, right? Which yeah. is a, a very common configuration mm -hmm. you're going to find in almost every large enterprise, but this is something that I wouldn't get likely from Cisco or Palo Alto, but your vendor independence, I think, makes it easy for, to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, there's even another view here uh, that's tied to one of our learning paths, and one of the things that you can see is you can see how uh, you know, Cisco's Viptela product is integrated with several different product lines, and so that's something that's very unique to us. That you know, very rarely can you find a place where you can go and actually get hands-on with a lot of different configurations. Uh, and really, we look at it not from the individual provider perspective or from the individual technology perspective, but how do these things work? How do these ar architectures come together? And really, that's what our customers want. They want the ability to see how these things work in the real world. All right. So I'd encourage anyone watching this to go on www.com, sign up, and take a look at some of these things, they're pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Chad, here we are in the data center itself. Yep. Uh, it's funny because we're in the cloud in a way, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, we have all these multiple rows of equipment, mm -hmm. and so what are we looking at here in this one? Yeah, I can't tell you exactly what we have here, but just as an example, you know, um, this data center has been you know, evolving for the last 15 years and you know, we're just in one row of several hundred rows of, of equipment that we have in here. And like I said, you know, there's equipment from you know, every one of our big partners, whether it's you know, Cisco or Dell or Intel. Um, you know, all of these products are all represented in here. And you know, again, in the way we've configured them and the way we've built our virtual labs, our customers can take advantage of all of these products, whether they want to test out a new feature on a particular product or they want to see how these products are going to integrate with the other products that we have in the data center. But having that all in one place, you know, allows customers to be able to do things that they couldn't previously do. So this isn't just WWT technology, you actually have some of your customers' technology in there? Yes, in, in many cases, uh, our customers, you know, we refer to the term as lab as a service. And we have a number of customers that actually will use us to set up a dedicated lab testing environment for them. So rather than having to make that investment on their side, uh, we can uh, provide that infrastructure for them. We can then easily uh, augment with additional technologies that maybe they don't have, but that they want to test out in their environment, so we're able to replicate their environments and really give them um, you know, the ability to kind of test things at scale, to adapt and adjust things, and then provide all the smart hands to you know, be able to make configuration changes and everything else. So it's a really popular offering with our customers. 
they love the ability to be able to um, you know, have this very, very robust testing lab without necessarily having to make the huge investment in the resources, the space, the power, and all the other things that go along so with it. So lab as a service lets them try things without having to commit the dollars, but then when they deploy it, they know exactly how it's going to work. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that, that's how our customers use this. And, and that, it really is a powerful tool. All right, thanks. Yep. Well, Chad, here we are in a pretty interesting spot. We got uh, uh, one of your employees, Brian Felt, here with a VR headset on. Yep. Uh, what is this area used for? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not all about the data center uh, and the cloud, um, even though that's a big part of it. But, you know, we do a lot of testing of some of the newer collaboration tools that are coming out as well, what tools from Cisco or from Microsoft or many of the other providers. And really, what does the next generation of, of work look like? You know, what is what does hybrid work look like? What does it look like to be in the office? What does it look like to work from home? And so, you know, a lot of these technologies are really helping to power that experience for employees. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of an exciting time just to kind of see how things are evolving. So, you know, whether it's, you know, using, you know, VR to VR and AR to help, help augment the experience or, you know, just some of the traditional meeting room systems, uh, collaboration rooms, et cetera, uh, you know, we know that, you know, getting hands on with these things is really key uh, to make sure that we understand how they work, how they interoperate together and really what kind of experience we're creating for our customers, for their employees and for their customers. All right, yeah, and, and I think this stuff's important because uh, as we talk about the data center and the, the, the labs with multi-vendor, mm -hmm. uh, it's very rare to find a large enterprise that doesn't have some combination of Microsoft and Cisco or other vendors, so being able to get those things interoperated is a big concern of the customers I talk to. Yeah, absolutely. We see it every day uh, with our customers, and again, that's what they hire us for, is to not just help them figure it out, but to show them what we've already figured out you know, with the testing that we're able to do uh, in the ATC. So again, the ATC is a very fast, uh, multifaceted space that allows us to you know, do everything from, you know, everything that you see, you know, on our, on our platform on WWT.com, as well as, you know, get really hands-on with a lot of the physical equipment uh, that really makes that experience real. All right, well, thanks for letting us disturb you, Brian. I'll yeah. let you get back to the metaverse or wherever you were. So. <laughs> thanks, Brian. <laughs> thanks. Well, Chad, here we are in, uh, in a different kind of space, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I think one of the things I'm taking away from this tour is that this isn't just about technology, right? There's a lot of questions about the future of work, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this is uh, a space that's designed to almost be a future of work type of space, like how you work in a hybrid environment. Yeah, I mean, you know, we really focus on collaboration. You know, when we're talking with our customers and with our partners and with even our own employees, you know, it's really about how well can they collaborate together. And you know, spaces like this are really good for kind of getting out of the traditional you know, boardroom style conference room and really getting people you know, face to face in a different environment to, to really get the juices flowing and really start thinking through what are the problems that you're trying to solve. So you know, this space and along with many others that we have here on campus are really designed to be flexible, um, to really adapt to the environment and adapt to the, the situation. So customers come in here and they'll do a lot of workshops. Uh, we'll do some of our briefings in, the, in rooms like this. Um, we have some other rooms that are more geared toward training uh, where, where we can adjust and adapt those to be more of a training environment. So really space matters and um, yeah. being able to use these spaces in a lot of collaborative ways is really exciting and, and there's a lot of you know, new technology that goes along with you know, some of the different physical layouts that we have. Yeah, one of the things that I, I, I like about this room is uh, I saw uh, Cisco CEO Chuck Robbins on CNBC mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago where he talked about uh, companies need to think of using their space as a magnet mm -hmm. and not a mandate, mm -hmm. right? And to be able to give employees an experience that they can't get at home because we've all mm -hmm. become accustomed to working from home. And this is certainly something that you'd not be able to get at home, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and even if you do decide to do that, that's where the technology really comes yeah. in to kind of bring those external um, you know, members into that conversation so they feel like they're part of that conversation and not you know, kind of a remote part of that. And, and that's really kind of a key because you know, we want to make sure that you know, these rooms are inclusive uh, and that the conversations are inclusive. And you know, maybe it's not a work from home, maybe it's just you know, we want to bring in people from different parts of the world to have these conversations. And it's much more practical to do it in this manner than it is to do it in, in other ways. So, um, yeah, spaces like this are really, really good. You know, lots of whiteboard, um, you know, lots of open kind of areas. You know, it also just kind of helps people keep, um, you know, keep, keep their mind open and, and flexible and, you know, keeps the conversation going. All right, well, thanks. Yeah. All right, Chad, well, this is a, a different kind of room. What, what is this used for? Yeah, so this room has a lot of uses. We use it for a lot of our big corporate meetings. Um, but more importantly, we use it for all of our virtual events. So, uh, you know, this is kind of our virtual TV studio. Uh, what you see behind us is actually a 45 foot by 15 foot LED wall. So we can configure the background in any way that we want. And it really gives us the chance to, you know, for each of the different shows that we do, to give them their own unique personality based on kind of the way we do the set. And it's very scalable, it's very easy to change. 
Uh, so it really gives us a lot of flexibility. So it's really kind of a neat space. And then what am I looking at here? Are these screens just one fixed screen or how customizable is the display back there? No, it's 100% customizable. We can do everything, you know, kind of end to end. In fact, you can see that white box back there. We can actually bring in remote participants, you know, right on the screen so that we can do kind of a, you know, uh, you know whether we have, you know, in-person guests as well as virtual guests, you know, we can bring them all kind of right in. So 100% flexibility with the screens. It's, it's a really great uh, feature to have and a really nice way to, you know, to, to hmm. do events like this. Yeah, well, quite the multimedia setup you have here. So. Yes, for sure. Thank you. All right, you. well, thanks. Yeah. Okay, well, that ends the tour. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Here. It was great to have you here, and I hope you saw something you liked. Yeah, and if customers want to learn more about uh, this facility or the labs, what yeah. do they go? Yeah, check out WWT.com, uh, and if you go there, uh, we encourage you to create an account and it gives you access to many more of the features that we talked about with the labs and some of the events that we do. So, um, but if you don't want to do that, just check us out. We've got a lot of good information out there, a lot of articles, a lot of case studies, a lot of white papers. Um, so check it out. It's a great place to and learn. And if someone happens to be in the St. Louis area, can, can they come visit this facility? Certainly, but you don't have to be in the St. Louis area for it. Um, if you're already doing business with us, uh, reach out to the account team that, uh, that you're working with and uh, you can schedule time to come to St. Louis and, and have a full EBC and really see firsthand you know, how we're doing these things. And, and again, it doesn't have to be just the show and tell. If there's a workshop or if there's a problem that you're trying to solve, come to St. Louis. It's a great place to bring your teams to come and collaborate and learn uh, and really take advantage of the, of the resources that we have to offer here. And have some barbecue. And have some barbecue, <laughs> of course. All right, well, thanks. Thank you.